yes, I think that would be a good idea for a movie. Now, I know what you're going to say. There's a lot of movies about time travel. It's been done a million times, including some of my favorites, like Back to the Future. Hear me out. The difference here, I'm thinking we use a refrigerator, a refrigerator time machine. So instead of food in it, you go in, you come out, you're in, uh, you know, with the dinosaurs or something. And now you got a million dollar movie. What's what's that look for? Steve Warner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to talk about creating an application client and secret as an automated way to authenticate to the graph when you can't log in. So we don't go into the movie business, but you're going to regret it. Think about that name, Refrigerator Time Machine. Get Rubix, solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so... We're gonna start in a little bit of an unusual way. This is something we're gonna work on in an upcoming series. Um, what we're doing is we're gonna uh, deploy this through Intune. It's gonna be a PowerShell script. It's gonna go to all devices. It's gonna get the Intune ID of a local device. It's gonna get its compliance state. If it's not compliant, it's gonna add it to an entry group for not compliance. However, if I'm gonna run this on every device, it's gonna run by itself. How am I gonna authenticate to the graph? Luckily, Microsoft thought of this, and that's why we have service principles or intra applications. Basically, these are entities that we assign permissions to that can already authenticate to different areas for us, and we could build these into our scripts. Now, there's different ways to secure it. We're just going to be focusing on what's known as a client secret. Think of it as a password. Um, but in production or in you know much larger environments, you're going to want to take different measures of securing access to that. Uh, so you can explore other options. But just for the sake of this, we're going to use the client and the secret. So to get started, we have a user. I think that's a pretty good looking user. The user is trying to access Enter ID or Azure or whatever. So the way it typically works is the user exchanges the username and password. And if the username and password are validated, Enter will return an access token to the user. That token can then be used to do things like access the graph through PowerShell or um, certain APIs or connect to an Entra application, whatever it is, right? Sign into Intune. That's what the token is. Now, what happens if you take the user away? Well, you can see there is no one to give a username and password. And this is why we need something uh, that we can embed in our code. And that's where the application comes in. So let's rework this a little bit. Instead of the username and password, we're gonna change this to client ID and client secret. So what we've created inside of Azure is an application registration, which is this guy right here. And this can be permissioned. So we can say, I want this to have device management, read, write, all. Or I also want it to have user read all. Whatever permissions that you want to provide to this object, you can. So now what happens is when we embed this into our script or function or whatever we're doing, we can have this client ID and secret automatically exchange to return a token that has those permissions and it can use those permissions to access whatever we were going to access as the user. All right, so let's walk through making our own app registration and giving it the permissions we would need to complete our device compliance check thing I was talking about earlier. So we go to entry.microsoft.com. You're going to go down to applications and hit app registrations. And this is where we go to new registration. So we're going to call this compliance checker. Since that's going to be the name of our solution, really doesn't matter what we call it. Um, we're going to leave everything here on default and just click register. And immediately we are given the first part of the puzzle the application or client ID. So we're gonna put that in a safe space. So I recommend a notepad and we'll say compliance checker client ID. That's my client ID. Now I have to give it permissions. So I'm gonna click on API permissions. Okay, and we're gonna to go to add permission. So in my case, this app is gonna do several things for me. Uh, so I am going to use application permission. This means I am permissioning this application on its own without the need for any user to sign in. So there's a few things I'm going to want to do if I go back and look at my solution, and we'll cover this in an upcoming video, but just for uh, 
kind of for kick. So compliance state, engine ID, these are device management properties. So in the device management node of the graph. Uh, Entra ID, device ID is going to be just devices. And I'm also going to need access to write to groups. We can start by looking up device management. So you can search for the fields you want. Device management. I'm going to need device management manage devices. I need to read all because I'm just going to be reading. I'm going to add another permission for just devices. And for that, I'm going to need to read write all. I'm going to need devices read all. And lastly, I'm going to need groups. And for group, I'm going to need groups read write all. And I hit add, and now you can see my app has all those permissions, but they're not consented. I have to click grant admin consent for Rubik's Dev. Now that I've assigned it the permissions, they're all ready to use. So this app ID has the same privileges as the user signing in uh, with an Intune admin or a global admin account would have. So we need our secret. We're gonna go to clients and secrets, and we're gonna hit new secret. Uh, I don't really know what to name it. You can set it for a certain expiration if you want. It could be custom. You can set it for today and have expire tomorrow. You can set it for recommended, which is, mm, I think it's 180 days. We'll leave it at that. And I click add and now I have a secret. It's very important to know you have two numbers here. The secret ID, which is fairly worthless to us. We want the secret value. So you can just hit copy next to value and get the whole thing. And I'm going to put this in my notepad. Don't worry. Um, by the time you see this, I will have deleted this. So I'm not giving you a client secret to my environment because um, that has some pretty powerful permissions to it. So great. I have these. So now that I have these, what's the point? Well, notice in our diagram, when we have the client ID and secret, we have to have a way to pass them up and get an access token back. One more thing to think about is if you're deploying this through Intune and running on all devices, you're not going to want to install PowerShell modules on all those. You're just going to want to do this with the built-in PowerShell. You don't want to push Microsoft Graph Intune and have to install all these modules first. So I'm going to show you how we can write our graph calls without the MG Connect or MG Graph Request module. So we're going to need a few things. We're going to need the client ID. We're going to need the client secret. And then we're going to need the tenant ID. And we are going to put a resource in. And the resource we're trying to hit with this is HTTPS graph.microsoft.com. And that's it. So that opens us up to the whole thing. Let's fill in those variables. Now, tenant ID, you can go back to your entry portal, click on overview and just copy your tenant ID. Okay, so we have all of our variables. Now let's go ahead and make a call to that endpoint in order to get a token. Same thing as if we're typing in a user ID and uh, password, only the thing that we're typing to. So we're going to call that the token endpoint. And that is going to be HTTPS uh, login.microsoftonline.com slash We'll put the tenant ID here, tenant ID dash O auth to, to uh, V2.0 slash token. And that's basically saying, hey, we're going to give you credentials endpoint and we would like the token back. Now let's give it the credentials. So it needs a body because that's how we give things to endpoints in this world. And what do we need? Client ID is equal to the client ID. Client secret equal to the client secret. The scope is going to be the default one. So it's going to be the default for our resource, which, which is the graph. So we're going to call that resource default and the grant type. Meaning what, how to get us in there is client credentials. Now that we have the body, we just make a post call. So we're going to put it in a variable called token response. 
and that's going to be equal to invoke. Now, it's not going to be MG graph re request. It's going to be something more generic because remember, we're not putting the module on these devices. So it's going to be called rest method. And this is available in PowerShell by default. So it still takes the URI. Um, we're going to give that the token endpoint up top. So we're going to say token endpoint. The method is still a post and the body is the body. We do have to add a content type and the content type for this is going to be as follows. It's going to be application X www form URL encoded. And then after that's done, we should, well, let's run that. Okay, it ran. So now we should be able to say our access token is token uh, response. Oh, sorry, no, access token equals token response dot access token. So if I run that, and we call it, look at that, we have a token. There it is. So now we're, we got here, we got the token back. So how do we append this to graph calls? How do we use this with graph calls in order to pass it through as some kind of authentication? So we're using the header because we don't have the graph modules. So let me show you what the two, what the differences are. If we had the module installed, we would do MG graph request method is get uri is https uh wow graph.microsoft.com slash beta slash device management managed devices and that would give me back if i was signed in the difference with using the native rest it's really not much invoke rest method method is get the URI is the same exact thing, graph.microsoft.com slash beta slash device management slash managed devices. So if I run the top one, it works because I'm logged in. But if I run this, it complained, unauthorized. I'm unauthorized because I need one more piece when I do a rest method, and that's called headers. So the headers object is how we take our access token and pass it through with the graph request, the, the rest method to say, hey, here's our authorization. So luckily making headers, it's not a difficult thing. All we have to do is make a variable for it. Say headers equals, and it's another code block, has two values, authorization, and that is equal to bearer, space and the access token variable content type is equal to application json so if we call headers we have headers and that contains the token let's see if that'll actually work for us so i'm gonna make that call down here we're gonna say invoke rest method Evoke rest method. Method is get URI HTTPS graph.microsoft.com slash beta slash device management slash managed devices headers headers. Here goes nothing. Look at that. So what this means is when you want to build uh, these PowerShell scripts to run by themselves, which we will do in the next episode, um, you're going to go ahead and build them and you can embed the app ID and client secret so that they just run and you don't have to log in and they'll have the permissions you set for them. Now, obviously, we have to be careful here because these are quite powerful. It's just like having permissions into a tenant. So you wouldn't want to put this in plain text or somewhere where the user can see. And I don't mean to get the security folks riled up. I know there's different ways to do this and there's more advanced methods, but we're just looking at the concept of this. So in production, work with your security team on how to secure this, but in practice and, and how it works, 
this will give you a way to do it and deploy this to devices without the need for logging in. We'll be seeing you.